HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by Webster First Federal Credit Union, providing financial products with attentive customer service to the local families and businesses of Hopkinton. Visit us at WebsterFirst.com. And by Golden Pond Assisted Living, honoring resident choice, dignity, and independence. Our health and wellness focus keeps residents active. Golden Pond, state-of-the-art senior housing and health care services. Hello and welcome to HCAM News, Tom Nappy at the Anchor Desk to keep you up to date with what's happening in Hopkinton. On this edition of HCAM News, some of the elite Boston Marathon runners from Kenya visited Elmwood for the 24th straight year. Girl Scout Troop 65040 hosted an edible book festival to raise funds for the Serenity House and we have a preview of this year's Hiller's Boys track team. But first, it was marathon madness in Hopkinton, as many events took place throughout town prior to the running of the 120th Boston Marathon. Here are the highlights from what was a very exciting and fun week in town. The first woman to ever complete the marathon, Bobby Gibb, was in Hopkinton as this year was the 50-year anniversary since she became the first female to ever cross the Boston Marathon finish line. She talked about her story to a packed house at the Hopkinton Country Club. From California, three days and three nights, uh, I subsisted on bus station chili and a bag of apples. <laughs> I got to the St. James Station and I called my parents. Uh, I had recently been married, that's why I was in San Francisco, so my husband was in the Navy. And I was against the Vietnam War, but he was in the Navy, uh, so uh, he was against the war too. <laughs> but anyway, so I, I came back <laughs> and I arrived. The day before the, the actually it's at night, I guess, I arrived before the race. I called my parents from the St. James Station and they said, well, where are you? And this trembly little voice, I, I went, and my mother, my mother, where are you? And I said, well, I'm in Boston. And, well, why? Well, I came to run the Boston <laughs> And of course, I hadn't told my parents that I was training for the Boston <laughs> because I knew they would think I was nuts and they would try to stop me. So the only people that knew were my boyfriend and a couple of my close women friends. Hopkinton High School welcomed runners from China. Students performed dances and songs to welcome the runners. <laughs> Just a spark of an idea that the, was given to the school superintendent, Kathy McLeod, and then a whole bunch of organizations came together that included uh, Golden Pond, Dynasty Restaurant, the entire Chinese community here in Hopkinton, and a whole bunch of other organizations came together, including the 26.2 Foundation, to put on this event that had not, it was such a, a warm welcome for our visitors from Shanghai and Beijing who are here to run the marathon, uh, and Dimitri Karyakides who lives in Shanghai, who ever, oh, a, lot of, a lot of you know his father won the 50th Boston Marathon and has a statue right outside of Western Nurseries dedicated to his father's win. And really it was uh, the first warm welcome that was the group from China and Shanghai, they are really the guest of honors. and. In, having performances and food and a few short little speeches uh, was quite, it's been quite a warm event. Hopkinton Middle School hosted their annual Desire to Inspire 2.62 mile run or walk in which the students completed the annual course around the school. Yeah, we love it. It's 800 kids running, walking, uh, challenging themselves, being with their friends, uh, just enjoying the day. And it's something that we look forward to every year. And the excitement is just awesome in the stands. Um, I'm on the mic and I have kids that are coming up, they're doing shout outs, um, and they just support each other and their teachers. 
And uh, we had something new this year. We had a little dab off with the teachers, and that went really well. Kids do this thing called the dab, which we older people don't really get. But um, it's something that you go like, that. And so we had a little competition with the teachers, and the kids seemed to enjoy that this year. Oh, OK, kind of like camping. Yes. <laughs> All right, I noticed, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but it looks like uh, they got some new uh, uh, ribbons this year. Uh, oh, these are the lanyards. Last year they got little wrists things. This year they um, got lanyards for their school um, IDs and things like that. We like to just give them a little memento, and it also keeps the desire to inspire in their mind, which is um, just a movement we have at our school that we want them to inspire each other, to inspire us, and to inspire their community. So whereas we do a lot of athletic things, we also bring in a lot of speakers, and we just want the kids to think about how they can be powers of change in their community and to inspire others. All right, and seeing that this has uh, become such a tradition here at the middle school, kids must really look forward to it. They do. You can uh, just feel the excitement in the class on the day of. They all got new t-shirts this morning, um, so they get their yearly t-shirts as well, and then they wear them to other school events uh, for the remainder of the year. So it's, it's really a great thing. We love doing it, and because we are the town that starts the marathon, we love having our own 2.62 challenge right before the marathon. So I want to thank Will Dion for being our, our first male to cross the finish line. And Kiki Fossbender, our female finisher. Be sure to stay locked in to our website, hcam.tv, for much more from all the Boston Marathon festivities. Speaking of the marathon festivities, for the 24th year, elite Kenyan runners visited Elmwood School. Each year, students at Elmwood study Kenyan culture and get a chance to talk to some of the most elite athletes from the country. Here are highlights from what many students say is their favorite day of the year. We made, those, um, we made letters for Caroline Roti. You can see that over there. We made a poster for Joffrey Mutai. Yeah, we made a poster for Joffrey Mutai, but he's not here. In pre-Boston Marathon festivities, John Hancock brought some elite Kenyan runners to Elmwood School for the 24th straight year. The runners once again got a rock star greeting, and the students were very excited to meet some of the fastest runners in the world. And the reigning champion of the Boston Marathon, how about a great jumbo and welcome for Caroline Rotich. world should see this event. I can't tell you how happy I am to be here and to see this. The preparation to do the marathon, and I'll do the international broadcast, we're going out to about 170 countries. It takes a lot of work and a lot of planning. It's all very serious. Every great movie has light moments. Every great movie is riveting. This event is riveting. I'm told it's really hard to get tickets and get in here, even if you're a parent. It has become that great an event. It is something that is so memorable for the kids. They never forget it. They talk about it for the rest of their lives. It encourages them to get on the track team. That helps their memory, their focus academically, the studies that have shown that. It is just in many ways, this whole experience of the Boston Marathon for the kids in Hopkinton is something that is so positive it will help them for the rest of their lives. I can't begin to tell you how much I look forward to this event as the, as the kids are screaming in the background and the, the Kenyans get all excited themselves. Listen to the cheering. You think you're down at Boston Garden at a Bruins playoff game or the Celtics playoff game. Um, it is just spectacular. I mean, it makes my, my week out here so much more memorable and wonderful than even the honor of doing the worldwide telecast here on television for the marathon. So anyway, I'm delighted to be part of it here and going out to the people of Hopkins. Elected member of the Kenyan Parliament and 2012 Boston Marathon winner, Wesley Career was a featured speaker. And every time I come through those doors, it feels great. It's never been old and will never get old. Today, when I was sitting down there, a young man by the name Jack, thing is over there. Who runs, uh, is Jack, what is his name, Mike? Yeah. <laughs> he came to me and he showed me a picture. A picture when he was a, a young boy and he was being held by one 
Moses Tanui. That was more than 10 years ago. When Moses was holding him, he won the Boston Marathon. So today, I try to hold him, maybe I'll win the Boston Marathon. I tried my level best to pick him and hold him the way Moses was holding him. But, but unfortunately, he has grown too big. But just looking at that picture, looking at that picture when Moses was holding him, I was in Kenya wanting to be like Moses, wanting to run like him. I didn't have an opportunity to be, hold by, to be held by Moses. He did. <laughs> and 2012, I became the champion of Boston Marathon. I went to the same book record as Moses Tanui. So that is the most important. This is why I'm saying this day is important for us, for the past, and for the future. Because what we do today, the pictures we take today, the pictures you take with us today, 10 years to come, 20 years to come, you'll be showing your kids. And maybe one day, one of us here will be maybe president of Kenya. And you say, I knew him because he came to Boston. How'd you like meeting the runners? That was fun, and that's one of the lifetime experience that I would have, and that was actually one of the greatest things I ever had. And then a select group of students got a chance to race with some of the runners around the bus loop. Caroline, you think you're going to win again this year? Ah, uh, that's my goal. So I'm going to get out there and give it 100%. <laughs> How's the Hold training it. been? Ah, good. Eight. Good. Uh, right, right. How do you like being back here at Elmwood? Yeah. Ah, uh, great. I feel great all the time. Here yeah, I'm here and see the smile on these faces. It's always good. And excited to be here. Have a good time? Yeah. It's the best day ever. Another great year of some of the elite Kenyan runners visiting Elmwood and many memories that the runners, students and staff will remember forever. A lot more to come on HCAM News including a trip to the Girl Scout Troop 65040 Edible Book Festival and a preview of the Hillers Boys track team. You're tuned into HCAM News. Don't go anywhere. HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by WPC Pest Control, a family-owned business for over 35 years. Owners Jim and Rebecca Mazzucchelli provide honesty, respect, and integrity, performing safe and effective pest control services. They service your home like it's their home. And by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of health care options. Do you have what it takes? make a difference? Always an adventure. Police and fire working together. Utilizing the latest technology. Do you have what it takes? Welcome back to HCAM News. Girl Scout Troop 65040 recently hosted an edible book festival to help benefit Serenity House and help underprivileged families purchase books and educational materials. Here is a look at the many creative and tasty looking book designs that were on display. So right now we're having an edible book festival to help raise money and awareness about reading and we're trying to raise money for the Serenity House. 
Um, so if we raise enough money, then we can buy books with it and give it to the kids um, of the people who live in Serenity House because their parents may not ha be able to like make enough money to um, get them books. We have um, a lot of people and we're hoping lots of people donate to the Serenity House today. Mm -hmm. so. We've got a few donations in the box. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's actually a bigger turnout than we were expecting. Mm -hmm. I, I thought it was just going to be like a few of my friends from school that I told about. Mm -hmm. That's what I thought too, but there seems to be a lot of people here and everybody seems to be enjoying it so far. Alright, terrific. Do you have any uh, favorite book that you've seen so far? Pie Virgin. We haven't really Pie Virgin. Oh We've been gosh. here. We, I we can't really say because certainly. they're all so good. Yeah, me too. Yeah. I, I really like all of them. I've seen some of them, but some are kept in big boxes, so I haven't really gone to take a look at all of them. But I think it's going to be super cool to see who wins, and I think they're all great. So this is the Edible Book Fair, and we're here to raise money to um, read to the children at the Serenity House because um, we're doing our bronze award, and for that we would like to um, encourage reading, encourage and reading to young children. All right, terrific. Do you have a favorite book here today? I, my favorite book, like I love the Harry Potter series, obviously. I just, I just love them all. I love the Mortal Instruments series and the Infernal Devices series. They're really good. So, um, welcome to the Edible Book Fair. Thank you all so much for coming. Um, and entering, for those of you who entered, those of you who voted, thank you. I'd like to thank um, a, um, an unlikely story bookstore and um, a Tatnuck bookseller and um, uh, everyone who donated to the kids who can't have um, afford to get their own books. And I'd like to hand it over to Kat. So I'm gonna be announcing the winner of the family um, one. And the win um, in third place is is Mr. Man series um, F3. In second in second place is Alice in Wonderland F2. And in first place is the Secret Garden F8. You guys, you guys can pick a prize. Yeah. I thought you were that one. <laughs> 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 can't believe it! <laughs> Yay! 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 Thank you. Okay. Um, in third place is Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. No, C. It's C4. Um, and this one's for the children. And then in second place is C7, Charlotte's Web. <laughs> so in first place was the girl was in our troop. So we're gonna hand over the prize to um, C7 because. this way. Hold it up. So this is for adults. In third place is a game of thrones. Um A2. Um in in second place is Little House in the Big Woods A1. In first place is Pi Virgin A3. I want to thank you for coming to the Edible Book Fair. I hope you enjoyed yourselves and have a good night. And stay free. Great work by Girl Scout Troop 65040 and all who participated. Some very creative and great designs. Hiller's Boys Spring Track is at the beginning of their season. I recently talked to the Hiller's captains and head coach Chris Shea about what to expect. 
Uh, hi, I'm Josh Normando. I'm a senior here at Hopkinton High School, and I am a sprinter for the track and field team. Hi, I'm John DeYoung. I'm a senior here at Hopkinton High School. Uh, I run the 400 and 4x4. Hi, I'm Michael Cuthbert. I am a senior, and I am on the sprinting group in track, and I run the 100 and the 200 meter. Um, so, I don't know about you guys, but I started as a freshman, actually in seventh grade, uh, my first year of track in middle school. Um, I guess we started running, because I got cut from baseball, actually, for spring, so I guess it worked out well for me. Um, I've had a great time here with track. Um, it's been something I, you know, I really wouldn't change for the world. So, uh, yeah, it's been a great experience, and I want to thank these guys for it. So I started track uh, my freshman year here at uh, the high school, and I had never run track before, but I've always loved running. And I, starting with this team, I found a great group of guys. We're all great friends now, and um, it's been just a really great experience. I, I was running track since middle school, and I really started to focus on track around uh, end of freshman year, spring, sophomore year, and I realized that it's really the sport that I love. After running, especially junior year and senior year, running with these guys has been great. It's always a great time running with everyone, and it's something that I wouldn't miss for the world. So uh, last year was a phenomenal year. We lost a lot of great guys, but I think this year it's going to be a major development year for us. We have a lot of guys coming up, including the freshman class. I think there are two, about a dozen, maybe 20, close to 20 freshmen. So this year we're really trying to kind of elevate our game off of last year, kind of step to the next level, so to speak. Um, we're all right now some of the best shape we've ever been in, and we just hope to kind of use that to our fullest potential, uh, put a maximum effort in like we've always done, and just see what we can make of the year. So uh, this year, and as well as last year, we've had a lot of depth on the team, and uh, the depth on our team is really good because it even like freshmen are placing in events, and we know that they're working really hard. As well as uh, in the preseason, we had a lot of kids show up to um, pr uh, get ready for the actual regular season, and now we have a lot of uh, kids who are very devoted to the team, and it should be a really good season with all of them. Right now for a lot of training, before the season starts and before we get our first meet going, we want to do a lot of conditioning, get ready for the season, These, especially these first two weeks. We really want to get in really good shape so that we're prepared for the first meet. And right now, especially we're teaching a lot of the uh, younger kids, like freshmen, sophomores, uh, handoffs for the relay groups. And we're preparing everyone for the future meets. You can see more from the boys' track team and all Hiller sports on our website, hcam.tv. With the Boston Marathon completed and spring in full swing, a whole lot of programming is coming up on the HCAM channels. Here is Courtney Taylor to tell you more with our HCAM Insider. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the latest edition of the HCAM Insider. On Friday, April 22nd at 8 p.m., Margie Wiggin shares her background and why she is running for the Board of Selectmen on Hopkinton Coffee Break. Thoughtful, planned growth. Mm -hmm. Because obviously we're growing, we can't undo the growth. Right. It's here, what do we do with it? Mm -hmm. You know, how do we incorporate those neighborhoods into us? Mm -hmm. On Monday, April 25th at 6.30 p.m., the Know Your Vote Forum will air live on HCAM TV. On Tuesday, April 26th at 6.45 p.m., the Board of Selectmen meeting will air live on HCAM TV. On Wednesday, April 27th at 7 p.m., the Hopkinton Women's Club Meet the Candidates Night will also air live on HCAM TV. And on Thursday, April 28th at 7 p.m., the School Committee meeting will air live on HCAM TV. On a new Wake Up and Smell the Poetry on Friday, April 29th at 8.30 p.m., audience members take the stage to share their original poetry, stories, and songs. The one thing she never understood, she now knows to be true. It all begins and ends with you. 
On Sunday, May 1st at 10 a.m., the planning board meeting from April 25th will air. And on HCAM Ed, the Hopkinton High School Drama Ensemble's production of Spoon River Anthology will air, where spirits tell the tales of their lives in a small, sleepy town. HCAM has so many programs to offer, so check out hcam.tv connect to find out more with our HCAM Insider Newsletter. And if you want to know about all of the latest events around town, you can sign up for our daily news updates. As always, thanks for watching HCAM. Now back to you, Tom. Thank you, Courtney. That will just about do it for this edition of HCAM News. Don't forget to stay up to date with everything Hopkinton by checking out our website, hcam.tv, as well as our Twitter and Facebook page. Right now on our website, you can find the latest Hopkinton-related news, including video and pictures from many Boston Marathon happenings around Hopkinton. If there is a photo, video, or story idea you would like to share with us, feel free to email me at news at hcam.tv. With your help, we'll cover even more of our community. For everyone here at HCAM, I'm Tom Nappy. We leave you now with the current community listings and upcoming government meetings. Take care, and thank you for watching.